California Governor Jerry Brown says he'll deploy up to 400 members of the California National Guard. But President Trump was less than impressed. Brown adding that he's sending the troops given that they won't enforce immigration laws or participate in border wall construction. Our next guest oversaw the Bush era border deployment. Retired Lieutenant General H. Stephen Blum joins us right now. Lieutenant General, great to have you with us. Hey, good morning, Abby. Good morning. Good so morning. how problematic is that? Well, it could be very problematic, but I honestly don't think it will be. Uh, I, I read Governor Brown's letter to the Secretary of Defense and Department of Homeland Security, and while there, <laughs> we are dealing with political polar opposites with the president and the governor, uh, there is a lot of common ground, and that common ground happens to be exactly where the Border Patrol uh, is expecting and, and anticipating support from the National Guard to uh, help them do their job on the southwest border. And I expect that uh, that's exactly what will happen, uh, the political environment mm -hmm. aside. I think operationally, this is going to be a very successful deployment, and it will have a good effect. But, General, uh, you know, they're going to stay within the bounds of law, but it's never, I got to believe, you know, having, having commanded an element like this, it's never helpful when a state comes with additional caveats. It's just like when you're in a foreign theater and a government sends troops but says they can't do this and they can do this. <laughs> As a commander, you want the ability to utilize them. So isn't it still problematic that he's putting parameters on what they can do? Well, yes, but it's not a problem that cannot be overcome. As you well know, uh, even when we deploy overseas in a combat zone or for peacekeeping missions or even humanitarian support missions overseas, when we do it as a coalition, uh, every country that comes comes with their caveats to include us. We've actually impo imposed caveats on some of the uh, military deployments that we've done. But in this thing, you have to understand, in this particular mission, the, the Guard will be in support of a civilian law enforcement organization. So they are in a support role. They're not in the lead role. But I clearly understand what you're saying. It's much better if there are no caveats. But when I was in Bosnia, we had 24 different caveats with the international force that went in there to do the peacekeeping. When you were in Iraq, we had caveats with mm -hmm. our allies, even our strongest yeah. allies. There were things they would or wouldn't do. So, But in this case, nothing that Governor Brown is saying Saying he won't do, I don't think will matter with the operational deployment because the Border Patrol is, is only asking for things that they have agreed uh, the California Guard will do. And if the California Guard were to refuse, the president has other options. I mean, there are other National Guards from all over the country that could come in, and they could come in in a variety of different statuses to, to, do, to perform specific missions. Well, you talk about the specific mission because it is just around a specific period of time, right? The National Guard troops are there only until September as uh, James Mattis signed it. What is the long-term solution then? What do you do after that? Well, frankly, long term, to, to secure our borders, you're going to have to have unity of effort between the locals, the state and the federal organizations that are involved in, in enforcing our border uh, security. The Border Patrol is the federal law enforcement agency that is charged with that mission, and the president clearly has equities in this. But so do the state borders, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, and California. And they're not the same. There are nine different border sectors. They're all totally different. And, and so the tasks and the missions that have to be performed in those sectors have to be tailored for those particular sectors. Sure. So what the Guard will do is what the Customs and Border Patrol asks them to do. And then that request will be vetted by the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Defense and the governors and the federal government, and then we'll, we'll, go, we'll go execute the mission, and I think it'll be highly successful. Yeah. I don't think this will end in September. I think as long as we have a border, we're going to have a cooperative effort along that border because things change. It's a dynamic situation yep. in Mexico. It, it's not static. Yeah. It's also tough to have unity of effort when you don't have, uh, have a wall and you also to have sanctuary cities and states that don't want to cooperate between local and federal officials. But that's my comment. That is yours. a great point. 
That is a great point, Pete. And the reason that California is not interested in a wall yep. is that they already have a wall. Yep. And oh, it's highly and it's, effective. And it's worked. Highly yes. effective. Lieutenant General Stephen Blum, thank you for your time. Appreciate great it, sir. Great to have you with us. Thanks, guys. You great got it. talking with All you. All right, still ahead, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan is live here on the Curvy Couch. Plus, we've seen a rash of conservative censorship on college campuses. But my alma mater is in part bucking the trend of typical Ivy League schools. I'll give you a look inside the James Madison program at Princeton coming up next.